Amelia and Gabi. Amelia and Gabi, both born again, were very close friends. Now, there came a time when Amelia felt that she needed to correct Gabi for something the latter was doing wrong. She gave the correction, but in a way that wasn't particularly wise. Naturally, Gabi wasn't happy, but never responded in any way to show her discontentment. The two women were not in touch for about three years. Amelia didn't think anything of it. She didn't miss Gabi. She did what she believed was her obligation as a Christian and a friend. Hopefully, Gabi understood that. Even if she didn't at the moment, she hoped she would someday and thank her for being a true friend. One day, the Lord told Amelia that Gabi wasn't happy with her. He instructed Amelia to get in touch with Gabi and apologize for the way she had approached her years before over what she was doing wrong. Amelia, wanting to please the Lord, searched out her long-lost friend's contact information, got in touch with her, and apologized for hurting her. Amelia let Gabi know, however, that she wasn't sorry for what she had said. She still meant it. Gabi shouldn't have been acting the way she was because it was not right for a child of God. What she was sorry for was her approach. She should have applied wisdom in handling the issue. Gabi accepted Amelia's apology and the relationship between the two women was restored. Soon, they were relating very closely like before, as if they had never been separated. One day, several months down the line, Amelia got a call with a message that shook her to the bones. Gabi was dead. It was unbelievable. How could that be? What could have gone wrong? Gabi wasn't sick, as far as Amelia knew. If anything had been wrong with her, she surely would have told Amelia. They had been speaking and exchanging text messages until two days before Gabi's demise, and there was no sign that anything was wrong as far as her health was concerned. As Amelia cried and prayed to the Lord regarding her friend's untimely departure, the Lord dropped in her heart something that made her afraid. Gabi was going to die, and he, that is God, wanted to ensure that she was ready for heaven. She was still unhappy with Amelia for the way the latter tried to convey her correction to her years before. She hadn't quite forgiven Amelia. That was why the Lord asked Amelia to get in touch with her, ask for her forgiveness, and make up with her. Now, there are people who believe in eternal security. According to them, once you are saved, you are saved and cannot go to hell, even if you deliberately remain in sin and do not care how God feels about your way of life. But that is not what the Bible says. Anyone who wants to reign with the Lord in eternity has to depart from iniquity, because according to Hebrews 12:14, those who are not holy will not see the Lord. God is not asking us to do this on our own, because he knows we cannot. He has made his grace available, along with his spirit and power. But we have to be willing to live right, and then tap into and make use of the help he has provided. While teaching his disciples to pray, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, And forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who sin against us. Then in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, he said, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, how would somebody make it to heaven if God doesn't forgive his sins because he is harboring unforgiveness against another person? Obviously, Gabi had not forgiven Amelia, and she probably would have gone into eternity holding on to bitterness and wrath, which are unwelcome in God's presence. Apart from his grace, spirit, power, and so on, God also wants to use our brethren to help us live the kind of life that pleases him. Isaiah 41 verse 6 says, Each helps the other, each saying to the other, Take courage. That's the common English Bible. And in Hebrews 13 1, we are commanded to let love of our fellow believers continue. That's the Amplified Bible. One of the simple ways we sometimes help our brethren is by doing the kind of thing the Lord asked Amelia to do. Humble ourselves and reach out to ask for forgiveness even when we think there's no need for it, or we think that the other person should be mature enough to move on without receiving an apology. Let us love our brethren to the point of going contrary to what our flesh wants, just to help make the Christian life a little easier for them. Remember also that when you make such sacrifices for the lost people, you experience greater joy and probably also save yourself from unnecessary heartaches. If Amelia had refused to contact and apologize to Gabby, God could find another means of making Gabby forgive her without receiving an apology. But then, imagine how guilty Amelia would have felt if she never made peace with Gabby and later heard that the latter was dead. There's no human being alive who knows what tomorrow holds for anyone. But God is all-knowing. Nothing takes him by surprise. That is why those of us who have the privilege of belonging to him 
should take advantage of the presence of his spirit, who is the spirit of truth. As we walk closely with the Holy Spirit and listen to him, he drops with us instructions that God wants us to follow for our good and or the good of others. We should not stop at hearing from God, but also endeavor with his help to follow his leading, doing everything he asks us to. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen.